Empowered people make informed decisions that lead to living a life without regret. This is Sarah Kaki and Shauna Woods from Atlanta Divorce Law Group, and this is the Happily Ever After Divorce Podcast. Hello, this is the Happily Ever After Divorce Podcast. I am Sarah Kaki with the Atlanta Divorce Law Group, and I'm joined by our managing partner, Shauna Woods. Hey, Shauna. Hey, Sarah. So, Shauna, today we're going to talk about exercising gratitude while you're going through a divorce or even after a divorce. You want to tee us off on this one? Absolutely. I think a lot of times, at least for me, when I hear practicing gratitude, it's like, what does that even mean? Mm-hmm. Which buzzword are we looking for now, right? Right. And how do we do it when you don't feel it? Right. So how do we do it, Sarah? If you're not <laughs> feeling it, what steps do we what do we do? So I love that you asked that question because I think when people are going through some really hard times in life where they don't actually feel they have anything in their life to be grateful for, it, this idea of, well, what you know, be gra- grateful or exercise gratitude, it can come at you like a ton of knives and you want to tell that person just off, like you have no clue what I'm going through. What I have learned through personal development and some studying in the coaching world, there actually is a science to this. There is a science to how your brain works with this. And when you look at it from a more scientific way and the response that your brain has and your emotions have to exercising gratitude, that sting, that buzzword that, oh, this is a new cultural fad thing to do to just be grateful or fake it till you make it kind of goes away and you see it as a um, form of healing. So first of all, gratitude is the idea of being grateful for something. Our culture and our society or the way we're taught to be grateful, it's usually for things that are already in our lives currently. That's how we usually think about great gratitude. Oh, I'm so grateful that, you know, I am healthy. I am so grateful for that there's money in my bank account. I'm so grateful for a healthy marriage. But our belief system and our the way we're taught to be grateful, it's exercise it for things that are already currently here. Now, that is where we trip ourselves up because We believe that if it's not here, I have nothing to be grateful for. So when you tell me to go be grateful when I'm going through a divorce and I'm fighting for the custody of my children and I'm fighting for 50% of my home, I want to go tell you to go, you know, jump in a lake. Yes. Jump in a lake, (laughs) ma'am, because I'm, I don't have the results in right now that I can be grateful for. However, If we could shift that paradigm and think of how can I exercise gratitude for the things that are not actually here yet, Mm. but I want to be in a state of expectancy for them, how can I be grateful for that? And what will that do to my belief system and to the wiring and the messaging in my brain to produce those results? So I'll give an example. You are finished with a divorce. You're now currently single you are hoping to find a new life partner. Mm-hmm. You have not found a life partner. You're not, you're single. You haven't even met a person that fits the bill. Instead of feeling like you can't be grateful because you're not in the relationship you want to be, you can actually exercise gratitude and say, I am so grateful for the great love that is coming to my life. I am so grateful for the partnership that I am going to experience. That state of expectancy of I am now expecting this to come to my life opens up your mind, opens up the wiring in your brain and actually forms the belief system that this is in my life. And our beliefs dictate what our minds actually believe to be true and what they bring into our lives. And that sends the message because the belief tells the brain what's possible and what isn't. And that sends the message to the brain that this is in your life. You can have a sense of expectancy of it. And then our eyes actually start opening up to more opportunities and more possibilities that we wouldn't have seen before. Um, I have exercised this in my own life when I am waiting for something that I'm really worried about. Let's say my I have a sick child, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm really worried about their health. Or let's say I have seen something behaviorally in my child that I'm nervous about, right? I have anxiety mm-hmm. about 
I will journal this every morning. I will literally say in my journal, I am so grateful for my healthy child. I am so grateful for my uh, child that has a successful mind. I am so grateful that my child is thriving in school. And just by putting that in my expectation versus Uh a negative message to myself, it calms my anxiety that I would have. And it then lets my belief system dictate to my brain, this is already in your life. Now behave as if this is in your life. And when I start behaving as if I have a healthy child and I start behaving as if my child gets good grades and is thriving and has good behavior, the results start showing themselves up because I am showing up from that state and then the results show, follow suit. And it's really tricky because people just don't have faith in this process, uh-huh. but there's actual science behind it. And I am not a psychologist and I am not a scientist, but I can point you to the science. The book that talks about this, and it's an old book from a psychologist named Maxwell Maltz, is The New psycho And it's a long book, but it's worth a read. And it actually talks about how your brain takes auto-suggestion from your beliefs. So your brain, and what what does auto-suggestion mean? It means the belief system tells the brain, I believe I am beautiful. I believe I am wealthy. I believe that I have a thriving marriage. This auto-suggests to the brain that these things are true. And then the brain starts actually physically emotionally, hormonally responding to that. And you start showing up as a beautiful, successful person that is in a healthy marriage Mm -hmm. and the results are different. This works the other way as well. You can give the belief system a very negative thoughts and you will have the same response. This isn't to minimize people who are going through a hard time. This isn't to minimize people that are having some serious challenges, but it's a tool to exercise this and then if you are showing up let's say you are having a very difficult relationship Mm -hmm. or you're in a very difficult financial situation it is a tool to use to find your way out of those situations because the brain then starts responding to this belief system and it starts seeing opportunities that might have not been there things that you were closed up to before it might see solutions that it might have not seen before and it might start and it may will show up in a way that if you are for instance in an abusive situation it will not tolerate it right whereas in a different state of mind in a lack of lack mindset and a gra- lack of gratitude mindset that abuse might have been actually tolerated or the physical I'm sorry the financial situation might have been tolerated because you've accepted it your, the belief system has accepted it to be true. Sarah, that is just, I'm, my mind's opening up here. It is, <laughs> and it's so incredible that you're bringing this up. It's exactly the same kind of thing when people are facing life-threatening diseases, right? right? They teach them to have the mindset of, I am healthy. Mm-hmm. I am going to get through this. I am overcoming this, right? right. And that mindset coupled with the tools, which in that case is the medicine, right? right? It is the what really helps people who are successfully recovering, I'm thinking especially from cancer right. and these life-threatening illnesses, to overcome it. It's a combination of a, you can't just have the mindset in that situation, mm-hmm. you actually need the medicine. For sure. Here. And what I'm hearing you say is the mindset takes you to the tools. Yes, exactly. And that's, and Sean, I'm glad you brought that up because my mom survived terminal cancer through mindset work. Doesn't mean she declined the medicine. She went through right. chemotherapy. She went through radiation. She went through years and years of tamoxifen, which is a very toxic medicine, but it healed her. And yeah. the reason it healed her is the brain had received the auto-suggested message from the belief system that this is going to heal me. I am going to be healed. I am complete. I am whole. And then let the medicine do the work. I personally am not of the belief system of sitting on a mountaintop with crystals in your hand (laughs) and saying these things and then waiting for the results to come. Right. This is supposed to put you in the right channel, put you in the right frequency, put you in the right state of mind to take the right actions to make those beliefs become reality. So it needs to be coupled. And I do have to also give a big shout out to 
the coach I personally worked on with this is David Nagel, and he has a podcast as well that for our listeners, I would highly recommend listening to the Successful Mind podcast. And David is the one who taught me, you do not wait for it, the, the thing you want in your life to come into your life before you're grateful for it. Be in a state of expectation. And the state of expectation isn't putting your hand out and saying, God, when will I get this? It's a state of, I am already, this is already in my life and I'm already grateful for it. And I am, know that it's going to be here. And I'm grateful for that. That's the healthy state of expectation mm-hmm. that can produce the actual real results. Tell us the name of that book again. The name of the book is The New Psycho-Cybernetics. I recommend listening to it on Audible because it's one of those books that unless you just love deep, deep psychological books that can be very, uh, it's actually like he's talking about medical statistics and he's talking about real psychology. I think it could be a lot to go through the pages, whereas I love, I've listened to it three times now. I love listening to it when I'm in a long drive Yeah, and love listening to the voice and hearing it over and over again, but it, it really has a science to it and it's a lot of other authors and scientists and psychologists have showed up after Maxwell Maltz and produced more on this whole theory. Yeah. And Happiness Lab, I think, is probably based upon that as well. That actually, believe you remember you telling me about that as well. And I was like, oh, this, this sounds right. Shauna, anything else that we should cover on this? I think we've covered it. Sounds really an amazing thing to have this brain work for us right instead of against us i love that and yes and learning how to use it right right learning how you can actually be in charge of it with your belief system yeah all right thank you guys so much for listening to us thanks for listening to the happily ever after divorce podcast if you like to learn more go to atlantadivorcelawgroup.com forward slash resources 